Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be doing a review on this Everlast Hyperflex Strike Bag. So stay tuned. Alright guys, so today we have the Everlast Hyperflex Strike Bag, which is basically Everlast version of a Cobra Reflex bag. I've had this for a couple of weeks now. Um, I actually disassembled it just to show you guys how it comes uh, before assembly and how I put it together and then how it actually performs when you hit it. Um, this is a $80 Reflex bag, so it's fairly inexpensive compared to like the ones you see from Ringside, Title Boxing, the Fierce Reflex bag, uh, Grodex, all the other brands that have a really nice Reflex bag. However, this one works differently, which I'll show you here. Uh, based on the spring placement of this particular bag. So just to show you what it includes, it comes with the plastic base that you can fill with water or sand. If you fill it with water, it's 65 pounds. If you fill it with sand, it's about 95 pounds. It does come with this plastic cap. You can see I already have it filled up with water. That plastic cap screws down, and then it has these machine screws, uh, screw holes right there uh, for that. So you have this base. It's pretty much exactly the same as the ringside uh, Cobra Reflex bag based. And then you have the actual bottom spring right here, which is pretty nice, heavy duty. You do have that base plate that attaches to the bottom. So that actually goes right there and the screws go on. From there you have the bottom pole, which has adjustability in terms of what portion you can use as far as the spring goes, which I'll break down here in a second. The screws, the Allen wrench it came with, the top pole with the adjustment, adjustment knob, the foam collar uh, that this actually screws into. So you can see that the pole screws into the bottom of this foam collar that's threaded. So the actual pipe itself is threaded. And then this top bag is actually made of a solid foam. Again, very similar to the ringside bag where it's not inflatable. So it's just a solid piece of foam, although it is a little bit softer than the ringside bag. So that's everything that's concluded. I'm going to go ahead and put this thing together and then we'll start using it. Okay guys, so I'm just going to go ahead and put this together real quick to show you guys how it's assembled. Okay guys, so I'm going to show you guys how to assemble this. Um, I have this base filled with water. It's about 65 pounds. I'm going to go ahead and put the bottom spring on, which mounts on. Then it just comes with these four Allen head screws that screw in. Just get these started real quick. Screw these in. And this is basically just what mount, mounts this bottom spring plate. Just tighten this on real quick. And do that. Now this is a bag that a lot of people have wondered about just because it's fairly inexpensive compared to the other bags at about anywhere between 75 to 99 dollars just depending on where you purchase it from and it's a little bit more readily accessible you can typically get this like at a sporting goods store like big five i think here in the states they have you know big five uh, dick sporting goods you buy it online and uh, so it's a little bit more easier to get the drawback I think I've seen is the performance of it. You know, not a lot of people like that it has this bottom spring and they feel that it takes away from the actual reflex and the rebound of the bag. But that's what this video is for to kind of dispel any myths or questions you guys may have about it. So next is going to be this bottom pull. It's threaded at the bottom that you can see here and this actually screws into the bottom spring plate. So let's go ahead and screw that by hand. So that's nice and tight. It's on there good. And then next is going to be the top, uh, the top piece right here. And this actually just slides into the pole. And uh, it has this little locking adjustment screw that you can use to adjust the height with and then tighten it from there. So that's pretty much everything. And then from here, all we have to do is adjust the height to where we want it and 
and start to hit it. There's three different settings, which I'll explain here in a second as well. Hey, what's up guys? Carlo here, and today I'm going to be doing a review on this Everlast Hyperflex Strike Bag, which is basically Everlast version of a Cobra Reflex Bag. Now, this has been one of the more requested videos that I've been getting, uh, mainly because this is one of the more inexpensive Cobra bags. Uh, prices around $75 to $100, just depending on where you get it from. I got mine from Big Five Sporting Goods, which is a, a smaller sporting goods store here on the West Coast, like California, Arizona. Uh, I believe just all around the West Coast, they have these stores. Dick Sporting Goods, and I think even Walmart sells this online. So it's uh, fairly easy to get uh, a hold of, fairly inexpensive, uh, especially if you're comparing it to like ringside title box and it has their own Cobra Reflex bags, which usually start around 250 bucks on up. And then you have the more premium products like the Ryan Garcia, the Ferris Reflex bag that his family came out with, which is about $500. Um, and then you also have Grodex, uh, which is a company out of the Bay Area that makes high-end um, punching bags, but they also make a Cobra bag now, which is about $500 plus shipping as well. So granted, those are probably nicer quality in terms of just the overall build and durability. Uh, but not everybody has $500 to spend on a Cobra bag, or even if they do, they just don't want to spend that amount of money on a Cobra Reflex bag. So here you have it. I've had it for a couple of weeks now. I uh, have a real good idea of how this thing works, and uh, I'll kind of give you guys my feedback on whether or not it's, I, I think it's worth the price uh, to get this or just to spend a little bit more money and get yourself another Cobra Reflex bag. So the first thing, like I showed you guys earlier, I actually disassembled it and put it back together. That way you guys can see how it how it assembles is you have the plastic base you can fill with water, which is up to 65 pounds. If you fill it with sand, it's 95. Um, it bolts down with a couple, like four machine screws with Allen head. Then you have a spring at the bottom, uh, which is advertised as straight flex. So it comes with this little laminated piece of paper to kind of tell you how it works. But straight flex, and you can see it actually pivots from the very bottom. From there, you also have a, a height adjustment knob. So you have uh, the lowest setting being 55 inches, the highest setting being 67 inches. So I'm 5'8", I'm about 68 inches in height. Uh, so that's right about here. If you go up any higher than that, the pole is going to come out of the base. Um, so if you're a taller individual, you'll have to put this base on top of something to elevate it higher. Um, otherwise, you're going to be punching downwards, which defeats the whole purpose of using this piece of equipment. Um, so to keep that in mind. Uh, then from there, you also have this foam collar, which covers the spring for the upper portion, which they call speed flex. So the ball itself actually bounces around too. And then you have hyper flex, which is both the bottom spring and the top spring that move all together at one time. So essentially, they're trying to sell you three different settings uh, with this Cobra bag. Now, I'm going to kind of show you guys each setting and how it works. Um, and whether or not I think it's worth it. So as you can see here, I have the hyperflex setting on where you have the bottom string that moves and you also have the top spring. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my gloves on and I'm gonna show you guys when I start hitting it, how this thing actually performs and how it rebounds. I'm using these Sanibel, those cactus gloves today. I've been training with these, they're part of my rotation. And uh, here I go, I'll show you how I, with hitting it, how it actually rebounds. So you can see it, it has a really slow rebound. Um, the only time it really rebounds back is if you just tap the bag. But outside of that, it de definitely doesn't rebound nearly as quick as like, the ringside or the title. And it has a very erratic uh, movement to it. Um, and it's definitely not even close to any of the other Cobra bags I used before. The redeeming quality about this, if I were to pick something, actually two redeeming qualities with this, is if you're looking just to kind of go with power, straight shots, and time it coming in, then that works pretty nicely because you can kind of work on just the erraticness of it. But don't, trying to throw any kind of combinations, um, you definitely won't be able to do that with this. It's just way too slow. Um, and you can also work on defense. So the good thing about this is that it moves and you can work on slipping, you know, slipping, weaving under a punch, and moving your head and getting your head movement in. So 
working on single shots for timing is good and then using it for defense. But if you're looking to replicate the same action as like the Ryan Garcia ringside, any of those ones that you guys have been seeing on social media that rebounds real quickly, this definitely isn't it. So I'm going to show you guys the other setting. So it has this adjustment knob that you unscrew. And then from there, a little push button. Let me go ahead and take my glove off real quick so I can show you guys. So now it's going to lock the bottom. So now it's just going to be on the speed flex setting. So essentially, the only thing that's supposed to move is going to be the top ball, the top ball spring, excuse me. So the bottom spring should stay stationary. And it, as you can see, it still wiggles quite a bit. And again, my timing's off because I'm not used to this thing going so slow, only hitting it with single shots, really. And you can just see how the ball kind of wiggles around. It just has a very slow and sloppy movement to it. The ball is definitely a dense feeling ball. Um, much like the ringside, it's not inflated. So it's full of foam, which from a maintenance standpoint is okay, but once it starts to dry out or start to break apart, then there's no bladder to exchange like a, a ball where you have an inside bladder and you can switch it out. So that's the speed flex setting. And again, you can see the bottom base isn't very stationary. Now I'm going to do the straight flex setting. And that's going to be where just the bottom portion, or should I say the bottom spring, moves. So now I'm going to lock the top. So just unscrew that adjustment screw. Slide that up. Now this will lock the top ball into place. And then I'm going to unlock the bottom. So now the bottom spring is the only thing that moves. Put my gloves on real quick. I guess I could do this without gloves, but whatever, I'll just use my gloves just to show you guys. So now the bottom ball, should I say the bottom spring. So it does a good job of keeping this upper spring locked in place with this knob. So that's a good thing. But you can see this is definitely more for just single shots. Trying to do anything quick with power is hard to do with this Hyperflex strike bag because it just doesn't rebound quick enough. Before single shots and timing is nice. Um, as well as working your defense, slipping. So that's kind of nice, but outside of that, you can see that it moves relatively slow. Kind of give you guys a comparison. I mean, you guys can see the motion of it right here. And then I have my other custom Cobra bag. You can see just how big of a difference. From a speed perspective, that this moves compared to this one. So, hope you guys enjoy the review of this Hyperflex strike bag. Um, you know, for seventy-five to hundred dollars, yes, it's an expensive, but the quality of it's okay. Having aluminum, I've heard some people that had issues with the bottom breaking. I haven't had mine long enough to break it, nor do I throw haymakers at it as well. So, um, but my main concern is just. The way this thing moves is just way too slow for my liking. Um, I already told you guys about the redeeming qualities of it being good for defense and single shots. But I would personally just save up a little bit more money 
and give yourself a reflex bag that moves quicker. That way you can work on your timing and your speed much more effectively than this bag, in my opinion. So if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you guys leave them down below in the comments box. I'll put the link in the description box where you can find this Everlast Hyperflex bag. See you guys next time. Peace.